it's time. We're at our shop space and we have been talking about replacing this cabinet that we use for storing paints and things in for a long time. It's needed to be done since we put the cabinet in. Realistically, we haven't had time and bless the people that have bought paint from the current situation. It's totally unorganized. We try to make it as pretty as possible, but mostly the paint's just thrown on there. So we wanna make a display that will be easy for people to see the paint, as well as make sure it'd be easier for us to stock an inventory. The space is a fun little cutout in the room, but the shelves are way too deep. They need to not be so tall. I could probably fit two shelves in the place of where we have one. It's just not working. It's not the best use of space. If you don't have a paint display that you need to recreate in your shop space, stay tuned because you're gonna get lots of tips and tricks and make better use of your space, whether in your shop or your home. I've already been to the hardware store. I got the lumber. I got 12 two by fours, three sheets of half inch MDF, and then I got a four by eight sheet of pegboard and picked up some inch and five eighths screws because that's what's gonna hold everything together. I'm also going to be using my pneumatic stapler slash nail gun to kind of hold the shelves up. This is gonna hold the supports for the shelves. Something to mark with, combination square, tape measure, drill, circular saw, and I think that's it. I may use my miter saw, but you don't have to have one. You could usually use this or even a hand saw. More often than not, I build things without having any plans, but this is going to be a little bit more complex than my typical build. So I went ahead and drew up some plans that are hopefully gonna help me with my measurements, mostly so I don't have to like keep checking back and forth and making sure things are right. I can just check the simple plans I drew up and know exactly how long I need to make a cut. So I decided to go the miter saw route. It's gonna be easier and quicker for me since I've already got it. And I can get a, I can set up a nice repeatable cut. What I'm doing here is I have it measured out where I wanna cut my first board. I'm just gonna make a mark here on the back plate so I know right where to butt that up to. As you can see, it's not the first time this has happened. So I decided two by fours all the way around were gonna be a little bit overkill. So what I'm doing is I'm ripping these two by fours in half. I've got them cut to the length I need. I'm just gonna cut them in half for the supports. And if you don't wanna do this process, they sell the two by fours in like one by three and one by two sections that you can also get. You're gonna spend a little more money than that because the two by fours are actually almost as cheap as the one by twos. Or almost as cheap as the two by twos, but saves you lots of time on having to cut them down. Okay, all the lumber is cut out for the supports. Now time to put it together. It's a delightful 56 degrees out here today. Well, in the sun it is. It's probably closer to 45 in the shade here. But just gonna put a little bit of glue. I'm building the support base for the shelves. To do that, I've just got some pilot holes drilled into these two boards. And these are 10 and a half inches long and the shelf will sit down inside of there. I only need to build five more of these and then I can run the cross supports. This is what it looks like laying down. I'm gonna add the supports on the top or bottom. It doesn't matter until I start putting shelves on. Either way, they're gonna be the same. Then I'll start measuring out where the shelves go. I've gotta build two of these identical, and then the back shelving unit is going to be a little bit different. These are the ones that are gonna be running down the sides. So this one, it goes against the wall, and it needs to fit flush up inside here. So that's going to drop down right in there so that it doesn't create more gap between the wall. So one of the reasons I'm going so heavy duty on this is because this is going to have to support a few hundred pounds of paint on it. 
and I don't want to just rely on screwing shelving into the wall to hold something like that. I want it to have support all the way from the floor up. I've got one frame done. I've got to do one more just like this and then the back shelving is going to be a little bit different. It's going to have some pegboard on it. I've got my drywall T-square and it's nice because it'll get you a nice straight line. I use it to make tables and things like that because a lot of times those are about four feet wide, sometimes less, but it'll get me the length I need. So I'm gonna cut these out with a circular saw. These are gonna be the shelves. And this is just half inch MDF. Should be plenty sturdy with the supports I put underneath the shelves since they're not super deep. All the shelves are cut out. Now I'm gonna notch them so that they fit really well right down in between those boards that I'm using for the supports. I got the jigsaw out, I know, I know. I'm using more tools than I said I was going to. This part here is real scientific. I've got a scrap piece of wood the same size as the boards that I use for the support material. So I'm just gonna cut that out. Do it over here. And once I get these cut out, what I'll do is I'll go match it up so that I can get that center rung just perfect. That way, if my line isn't exactly straight or I didn't get that quite square putting it up, that it still fits. This is the back end of the shelving. I'm just making sure that everything fits pretty good right there. Just kind of lining everything up. And then I'm just gonna mark right here where I need to do my cutout. And then I've got that scrap piece of wood just gonna trace that out. Gotta do this nine times per shelf. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, that fits pretty nice and tight. So I want nine inches between the shelves. I've just measured this out, cut this board to be nine inches, and I'll just measure that so that all my support braces are right where I need them to be. I've had these corbels kicking around probably about a year. I built a table about a year ago and made double what I needed. So I'm gonna use these, I've got 12 of them. I'm gonna use six up each side. So six of the shelves will have these on there. The shelf build is coming along a week and a half after I started it. I am almost ready to paint. I've got to get this, this is called garage board. Essentially you put pegs in there. Some people call it peg board, but you put pegs in there and you can hang things on it. And that's going to be on the back of the three sections. I've already got most of that done. I've just got to put backers on everything now. All right, so it's time to staple the back onto this. I'm using pneumatic 18 gauge staple gun and nailer, and I've got half inch staples in this. What I've got here is half inch MDF trim. It comes in two and a half inch strips. I've ripped it down to one inch, and that's gonna go right here. This strip of MDF is gonna do three things. It's gonna add some stability along the front of this shelf here where there's no support. It'll make it more rigid. It's also going to make it look more substantial. And third thing is it's gonna hide this ugly edge here. It's time to spray the shelves. We're gonna paint them white because it's gonna really make the paint pop and all the branding and logos and everything look really good and everything else in the white the walls are white in the shops so it'll fit right in i've got my hvlp central pneumatic 20 ounce sprayer make sure you're masking up even though the paint i'm using is all natural and has no vocs you still don't want the mist that the air compressor is going to create in your lungs
Real quick public service announcement. It's November and it's 32 degrees outside right now, so it's right at freezing. I've had this heater running for about an hour to get it warm in the garage. It didn't really run it much all day. And it has got this garage right at about 75 degrees. Like it's warm enough in here. I don't need a coat. I'm starting to feel a little sweaty and I can definitely paint. This little new air heater runs off of 220 and it is super efficient. It's not very big. I mean, you can see here, probably only about 13 inches tall, but it'll heat a 500 square foot area in a big hurry. Got the shelves all painted up. I didn't show too much of the painting because once you see about 10 seconds of spraying, it's all about the same. But I'm gonna go ahead and seal them with Sweet Pickens Top Coat. I haven't diluted it or anything. I'm spraying right at 55 to 60 PSI, somewhere right in there with this top coat. I find that I don't get too much mist, but I still get good coverage and it doesn't splatter out at that pressure. I'm just gonna countersink a few holes right in here to hold these together and screw them together and then everything will be real nice and sturdy and I can start loading the paint on. I'm starting to load the paints on and the paint brushes and everything like that. And the trick is going to be to get the colors all on here in some sort of organization and not mix everything up. I wanted to color code it, but then I was like, mm, the bead board is pretty close to white swan, so I'm actually going to put those away from each other. That way they don't get mixed up. The paint hole is finished. <laughs> I mean, sorry, the paint display. I still have to get lighting. It's a little dark back it's here. It's kind of a hole, but it's got all the things that people will need to do Sorry. their projects. Sorry, I pushed you a little. Say okay. that again, say that again. But it's got all the things people will need for their projects. And I like it because I feel like it's a much better use of the space than what we had. And we can keep a lot more stock and people can see it all. As always, I was a little ambitious with the project. I was gonna do trim and molding around everything. And we kind of just were like, let's get it done. It'll hold the paint. We left some edges raw. We were like, let's get it done. Jamie. I was like, finish the project three weeks later. We're still not quite finished. We've got to do fairy chalk mother little sample um, strips. So we'll get those done in the next few days. I need to get signs made that I'll use IOD stamps and I'll make little signs that have the yeah. pricing for the quartz, pints, and eight ounce samples. Be sure to stop by and buy some stuff because we have a lot of it. <laughs> we are well stocked. We're gonna get more DIY in here because we can now see what we're out of and what the more popular colors are that are selling in the area. Well, we didn't have any more room. The only reason we have so much fairy chalk leather, this has been sitting down in the basement since September. We've had thousands of dollars in stock just hanging out in the basement. Now it's up here where people can actually buy it. Yeah, because we, we need to sell it bad. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys have questions about displays in your shop spaces that you maybe need help with, comment below. We can help you out. Our subscribers are pretty knowledgeable. They can help you out. Be sure to stop by the Jamie Ray Vintage Group on Facebook. It's a great place to get information and also inspiration for your retail shop space. We used DIY paint in White Swan and then we sealed it with Sweet Pickens Top Coat. You can pick those up at jamierayvintage.com. If you want some of these products and you don't live in Utah, be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com for all your DIY needs. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. <laughs>